Today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you a fun way to color your stamped images using Gina K Designs reinkers and a water brush. Let me show you the tools and products you need to do this technique. First, you're going to need some ink, and I am using some of the Versamark Watermark ink. Along with that, I'm using an embossing magic pad. This removes all of the static from the surface of your cardstock, along with any oils or any other debris that might be on the cardstock that will trap embossing powder. Then, for embossing powder, I'm using some of the Stampendous Fine Detail White. For colors, I'm using two Gina K Designs reinkers. I'm using the powder blue and the navy. Then for ribbon and twine, I'm using some of the Gina K Designs white organdy ribbon. Now this is the 5 eighths of an inch. I also have a white button from our white buttons collection. And then I also have some of the We Are Memory Keepers black and white twine. Now you can use any of the We Are Memory Keepers twine because really what I'm going to do is just separate the two strands and only use the white one. If you have white twine in your stash, that would be perfect for this card. Then you're going to need a water brush or a paintbrush, and I'm using the Niji water brush. Now you can fill this canister with water, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use a little dish of water and just dip the end of the brush into the water and work from there. Then you're going to need some scissors for your ribbon, some adhesive, and some stamps. Now the stamps that I've chosen to use for this card project are the uh, stamps from the stamp set duo called Especially For You. This is one of our free stamp sets this month when you place a $75 order. And I wanted to show you how big this stamp is. When you see this card and how big these flowers, this flower looks, you're really gonna love this one. And it's nice that you can get it for free with any $75 purchase. You're also going to need an extra acrylic block. It can be square, round, large, small, whatever. Uh, but I would recommend working, if you have a block that has lines etched in it, I would recommend you working on the non-etched side because we're going to be actually putting re or dye on here and it does kind of get stuck in those cracks and it's difficult to get out. For cardstock, I'm using some of the Gina K Designs Wild Lilac also some of our in the navy and some white. So to begin, I'm going to start with this piece of wild lilac cardstock and I'm going to use the embossing magic pad to wipe away any debris, oil, or static from the surface of the card. Then using the Versamark pad and this large rubber stamp, I'm going to ink that up with Versamark and the first one that I'm gonna stamp, I'm gonna stamp just a little bit off the corner. So the first one, let me grab my glasses here so I can see. It's kind of difficult to see the watermark on the screen, but when you do this in person, you'll be able to see it very clearly. Okay, I wanna get a nice good impression there. Okay, so there is my first flower. Now I'm going to do another flower and I'm going to turn the daisy stamp so that it's going in a little bit of a different direction so it doesn't look too patterned. So this one's going to go here and then I'll put one right there. And I'll do the same thing a little bit off the side there. Now I'm also going to add a greeting down at the bottom, the especially for you greeting. And again, I'm doing this with Versamark. And that's going to go right down here at the bottom. There we go. Now I just have a little scratch piece of paper here, a little extra piece that I'm not using. And I'm going to use that for when I put the embossing powder on so that it'll make it easier for me to catch the embossing powder. Sometimes I use a folded card base. That works too. All right. And the greeting. There we go. Now if you have a little shallow space, that's okay. You can actually take a little bit of the Versamark 
And let me grab a little tool back here. Let's see if I can find something that will work. I'll just use this little knife here. And I'm going to just tap a little bit of that ink on and tap that ink into that spot. This is just a plastic knife. You can use whatever you have. You might have a little Q-tip or something like that. A blending stump will work. But that just adds a little bit more embossing powder into that spot. I think my water brush might be too dirty to use, but even if you wanted to just use your finger, you could do that too. And you could add a little bit in there and then a little powder on top and you'll get it filled in nicely. All right, so now I'm going to replace this powder into the jar and get that out of the way so I don't cook the embossing powder that I don't want to and clean up that area there. Okay, so now using my heat tool, I'm going to heat this up and I have a protective mat on my work area here, so you can emboss right on this mat. And you can see with the white cardstock, once that cardstock, that white powder is embossed, it gets a lot brighter white and so you'll know it's done. You don't want to overcook it because you don't want to burn it or it loses its shine. And that looks pretty good. Make sure we got all the edges up there. Okay. So now for my next step, I'm going to grab that acrylic block and I'm going to take some of the powder blue reinker and just put a dot of it, a dot or two, onto the block. Then I'm going to grab that water and wet my water brush. Just rub some of that off. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of that powder blue Thin it out a little bit on the block there. You can see I'm just kind of thinning it out. And then I'm going to start to paint these flowers, but I'm not going to add more paint each time I move to the next petal for about three petals. And then I will add a little bit more. Do this one, full color. And this one with a little less color. And then this one with hardly any color. You can add a little bit more if you want. But. And you can see I'm starting to get a couple of different color violets and blues. The blue doesn't really look quite as blue up against that wild lilac cardstock. It has purple tones in it. So I'm going to keep going here. That one I watered down a little bit, so I think I'll add a little bit extra. And it does lighten up a bit once you've um, once it's dried, so don't be don't be too shocked if the color looks too vibrant. Okay, grab a little more. And what's really fun about watercoloring this way, the embossing ink really holds the water and the paint inside the image. So you're much less likely to go outside the lines, which helps me quite a bit. All right. This is actually so nice and therapeutic. You'll really enjoy this kind of coloring. Add a little bit more here. And you can see how those different shades together look so pretty. A couple more petals here. And then I'll show you how I added the, the navy in there. And 
and you can kind of look at it and play with it. Maybe some areas don't look dark enough to you and you want to add a little bit more dark. That's just fine. Maybe you like the softness of having them all lighter and that's fine too. This is all about what you like. Okay. So you might see some areas that you want to fill in first before you get to your next color. And you can see how it's all lightening up quite a bit as it's drying. Now my next color is the navy and I'm going to add just a drop of that. Just a little bit of that. I don't need too much. And then I'm going to thin that out just a little bit. And what's fun about the navy is it's got a little bit of a hint of teal in it. You don't really notice that when it's a standalone color, but you will notice it up against the purple. And that really pulls in a really pretty element. So I'm just going to add a couple little lines here. Kind of following along with maybe just one side of the flower petal or one area. You can see I'm kind of picking and choosing and I'm not really re-wetting the brush so the colors going to get a little bit lighter as I go. And you might want to add a little bit more to your brush. Kind of like dipping this water brush into the water and then into the ink sometimes because when it's filled with water, sometimes you get a little bit too much water. So if you're not quite a water coloring pro yet, like I'm not, <laughs> I have a little bit more control with how much water ends up on my brush when I dip it versus having it in the uh, canister and squeezing. So there we go. You can see how that flower is coming together many many different shades of purple and lilac and soft periwinkle blue now i want to show you my finished card project and tell you what i use the other pieces for but just a quick um, update you would mount this onto your navy piece add your ribbon and bow and then this would go onto the white card base but let me show you my finished card because i've already done that and i've colored all of those flowers in so you can get a feel for how it looks when it's all colored in. So what I've done here is I've just wrapped a little bit of ribbon around the panel and then I added another piece of ribbon and tied a knot and you've seen me do that so many times. For the twine, I just cut a small piece of twine to make a bow and then I just untwisted that and grabbed the white one and then I just pulled it apart and I used just the white side. And then of course you're going to want to save this for when you want to tie a button or an embellishment on with just a black piece of twine. So save all of your colors in a little basket or a little bag whenever you want to use just the white piece. And I just tied that button around there. So there is my finished card project. Clean and simple, but really is a fun way to add some color to your card project. Try using sweet mango on dandelion cardstock or fresh asparagus on our jelly bean green. Whatever combinations you use, you'll love the soft watered colored look of coloring with reinkers.